Welcome back to another exciting YouTube video and what we are talking about today is my mostest favorite guitar. What I have here is my heralded 1996 Eddie Van Halen PV Wolfgang. This is without a doubt the greatest guitar I have ever owned. I have had this guitar in this, Lord, 24 years. This guitar is 24 years old now and it still plays and sounds absolutely amazing. Uh, when I first got this guitar, when I first started playing the EVHs, it was kind of weird because at, at the time I was, Lord, I think I was playing a BC Rich ST3 in ice blue. <laughs> I would love to have that guitar today because those are those were the American made uh, BC Riches, and uh, it was cool. I had to point it down headstock. I mean, it was just right on full on 80s rock and roll. And um, man, the guitars I've sold that I never should have gotten rid of. I, I can't even count how many guitars I should have kept. Uh, I got a couple of them that really hurt me. One of them's uh, one of these. I had a white one of these because the uh, the PVs in this, the white actually did not have a maple cap on it. So in that guitar, it actually had just a touch darker tone than the ones with the maple cap. And that was a mistake getting rid of that one. Should have kept that one. And then I had a, um, I had a John Petrucci Picasso. Another one. Never should have got rid of that either. One of the old Ibanez's. Oh my God, that was a mistake getting rid of that. But luckily throughout the years, I've had enough sense not to sell this guitar. This guitar actually has been my main gigging guitar for, uh, well, forever. And um, it's definitely not the prettiest of the Eddie Van Halen uh, line, being that it is a tobacco burst. And believe it or not, tobacco bursts are not my favorite. Oh wow, look how dirty my guitar is. Um, Believe it or not, I'm not a big fan of the tobacco burst color. I love the amber. I'm not so much for the, the smoky burst it goes into, but this has been one of the greatest playing guitars I've ever had in my life. And until today, it is still, well, not one of the greatest playing guitar I've ever had in my life. And I just cannot bring myself to part with it. And it's pretty cool that it's actually a pre-patent Wolfgang before he actually got the patent on the instruments. So I'm gonna talk about this guitar a little bit and why I think, well, why to me this is the greatest guitar in the world, and why I think it's just why I think it's one of the greatest guitars for anybody to own. Uh, if you've never played a PV Wolfgang, an American, you might want to give it a shot and um, try to get your hands on a good one. Values going up. Uh, there's some of them. I had a green one. Uh, I guess that's another one I probably never should have got rid of too. I had the uh, green flame maple, and uh, but there for a while I was buying and selling high end guitars, and so at one point I actually had 13 of these. And I mean, I've sold them all over the world. I've sold them in uh, Ireland, sold one to Scotland, sent one over to the UK, um, all over the United States, and I uh, met a lot of interesting people along the way. It was actually pretty cool. And uh, you know, with a little help from God, maybe I'll get back into that one day, but uh, guitars aren't what they used to be as far as, you know, pricing and stuff. But this guitar, this is a basswood body guitar, or basswood, however you want to call it. Um, I guess these are about seven to eight pounds, seven to eight and a half maybe. They've got some chunk on them, they got some weight, and I do like heavy guitars. Even my, uh, my Ibanez PBZ is made out of mahogany. It's still seven pounds, two ounces, I believe. So it's got a little bit of weight on it, and I like that. This is, of course, basswood, like I said. It has a flame maple top on it. Uh, very good flame maple, too. It's um, not quite book matched, but it's pretty damn close. I mean, they do a good job putting these together. Of course, these guitars are arch top. They're not flat. I do love the arch tops. That's one of the cool things I really liked about them when they got away from the um, uh, Ernie Ball. All those are, those are amazing guitars. I do like the PVs better. I just think they're a better guitar, hands down, all the way around. This guitar here, obviously, it has the EVH Wolfgang pickups in it. These things sound amazing. And I can assure you, if you know anything about tone, EVH Wolfgang pickups are tone monsters because they're literally created by the tone monster of the world, Eddie Van Halen. I mean, if, if that guy can't find a good tone, then it's not findable. 
um, and they're specifically made for these guitars. I do like guitars that have pickups specifically made for them instead of just running a random pickup into a guitar, which so many companies do. Um, uh, Jackson, which of course they're all owned by Fender now, 90% of them, but, and even Ibanez, you know, a lot of their guitars, they'll just take uh, DiMarzios off the shelf and stick them in there. They still sound good, but that, that kind of kills the guitar for me because you just can't stick any pickup in any guitar. It doesn't work that way. Uh, if you run, for instance, if, if you have, let, let's say you got a, um, a guitar, mahogany guitar, let's say you got a PRS, uh, not a PRS, or a PRS would work fine, or a Les Paul. You know, the last pickup I would put in that guitar is a DiMarzio Super 3 because that's a very dark pickup. And in that guitar, it's just going to swallow it up. The whole thing's just going to be too dark. So you got to kind of get a balance between your pickups and your wood unless you're just going over a super dark tone. Um, these pickups here, actually, they're a little on the bright side. It's Eddie Van Halen, so they, he does like a little bit of a bright sound. And, of course, they sound phenomenal in this guitar. Uh, moving on, this guitar, it does have the Eddie Van Halen carve. This one has a bird's eye maple neck as well as a bird's eye maple fretboard. It is a 15 degree radius, which I absolutely love. That is my favorite radius of all the radiuses in the world. 15 degrees is by far my favorite. It's not so flat that it's kind of uncomfortable, but it's still got tons of shreddability to it at a 15 degree. Uh, there for a long time, it was very popular. John Petrucci ran 15 degrees forever. Um, my Ibanez has a 15.75. Uh, which I still find pretty comfortable. When I start to get over 16, I start, it starts to get just a little touch flat for me. Uh, the new John Petrucci's, I believe, are 17s, and that's, I played them, I've had a Majesty, and it's just, it's just a touch on the flat side for me. Although very shreddable, touch on the flat side. But like I said, Eddie Van Halen Carve, Bird's Eye Maple Neck, both uh, front and back Bird's Eye Maple, which is actually pretty cool. I do like that. Um, these are, it has the black dots on the top on the Bird's Eye, sticks out very well, very easy to see. Black dots in the middle. I do like the black dots. I know the new ones have the trapezoids or whatever they call them on it. On the EVHs, I just I kind of prefer the dots. You know, I just um, to me it's just kind of a a classic thing uh, in my eyes. Obviously, it's got a locking nut on it and it has a Floyd on it. It has the uh, EV the uh, PV Floyd, which I'm pretty sure is made by Floyd actually, uh, to EVH specs, and it's got the EVH tuners on the back. They are not locking tuners. I do love locking tuners, even on locking guitars, but they're still very, very good machines. Obviously, we got a 3-3 side on the Music Man. We ran a 4-2, and it's got the piece here that um, you know he notched out for uh, his new ones that are made at the EVH Fender. Told you, Fender just freaking owns everything, man. Um, they notched this out. I do like this look a little better than what's on the new ones. I just think that's a little bit of a classier look on this one. And uh, it's got a small headstock. I like small headstocks. Never was a big fan of big headstocks on it. And it does have, this does not have the burn pots in it. It's got very good pots, but they're not as freewheeling as the burns are. Um, these are, they're low friction pots, both of them, but they're not like super low friction. I don't know if you've played one of the new EVHs, but the new pots, I mean, you can, and that thing will almost turn. There's crazy low friction on the volume, and it's got a high friction on the tone. These are equal on both sides uh, as far as the, the amount of friction. So, But it's still easy to get to, very easy to roll off and on with your pinky. Works very well. And these are the original pots in this guitar. Believe, believe it or not, I've not changed anything in this guitar. 24 years. Everything on this guitar is original except for the frets. Because if you watch any of my other videos, kind of a fan of stainless steel frets, and... If I buy a guitar that does not have stainless steel frets, the first thing I do is I have the frets jerked down and I put stainless steel frets in it. All guitars should come with stainless steel frets. Had a buddy of mine up in Knoxville do this, uh, Mr. Rick Asher. The guy's a neck guru and a fret guru. He put all these in for me. And these are the same width as the new ones as far as the vintage. But I went with, a, uh, I went with the skinny talls. Granted, I'm sure you can't see them. They're just a little taller. It's not as tall as a jumbo, but it's a little taller than the vintage. Uh, the vintages are just a touch too low for me, and I really get into the fretboard on that, so I want something a little taller. Uh, these are fantastic. If you ever have your guitar fretted, go with the, the skinny talls. Um, I'll have to get the exact dimensions of them, but you know everybody I know just calls them skinny talls, stainless steel frets, and they work brilliantly, absolutely brilliantly. Uh, this guitar has been a workhorse, man. It's got the D-tuna on it, of course. Just flip it out, and you go to drop D. Absolutely brilliant. It does come, oh, yeah, lost my plate. 
I, I mean, there's no telling where that thing's at. It could be, it, this thing could be on Mars by now for hell, who knows? I lost this thing probably 15 years ago. Um, it does have a, comes with a brass block in these, which is absolutely very cool. They put them in there. All uh, guitar companies that actually make guitars with trims, they should put brass blocks in them. And that's just, that's just quality detail. And that's one thing I love about the EVHs. I mean, you know, the guy goes overboard on his guitars. And in my honest opinion, they're the greatest guitars made. They're better than everything else on the market. I don't think anybody makes a guitar as well as EVH does. And I know everybody out there is going to disagree with me. And most of the people who disagree with me probably have never played an EVH. And don't get me wrong, you know, I love my Ibanezes. I've had some great ones. Uh, I've had some great Les Pauls. I'm sorry, this is a better built guitar. It's, um, even the new ones, he put the graphite rods and the rods go all the way through the headstock on the new ones. So if you drop this thing, pow, it won't snap off the uh, headstock. And these things are built like a tank, man, 24 years old. And I've had nothing ever done to it. Uh, occasionally I set it up, the stainless steel frets, and this thing still plays like a freaking dream. And um, original trim, original detuna, all the original screws, original knobs, original pickups. I, there's just nothing else to say. This is just one of the finest guitars in the world ever made. So with that being said, let's just take a little quick listen to it. Uh, I'm not going to drag on too long with this video because if you don't know what this guitar is, and that's a shame, but chances are a lot of people out there have already played one of these guitars or owned one of these guitars. I'm only doing this because I think this is the, one of the greatest guitars in the world, and this is my most favorite guitar. Going to have some noise here, so here we go. Yeah, oh yeah, there we go. Tell you what, let's go ahead and stick the trim arm in. One complaint about this this guitar is it's got the old screw-in trim arms. I do not like these things, man. Now, granted, I can change that out. I just, shit, I never think about it, to be honest with you. I never think about it until I go play a show, and then I think, damn, I should have changed out that trim piece. Um, greatest pick in the world. And this is why I do not like them. Now, granted, I am coming through my camper through my headrush straight out to the room mics. This is a very, very high-gain channel. Listen to this. <laughs> I hate that. Oh my god. It's just so much noise out of that thing. Listen to that. I hate, I, I just don't like the, the screw in kind. And I keep mine very well lubricated uh, so I don't get the squeaky squeaky out of it. And But still, it just, they make noise. I hate that. So at one point, I will remember and change that out to a. Uh, you know, the kind that you, you know, you screw, it has a threaded collar on it and get rid of the screw and thing. These are just noisy. And granted, like I said, I'm on a very high gain channel, but that's one of the reasons I went to the high gain channel, so you can hear how noisy this thing actually is. So with that being said, let's see what this thing sounds like. Very high gain channel. This thing is these pickups are still incredibly articulate um, if I was to pull out one of my other guitars and you I mean the difference would be just crazy because even though um, you know my other guitars have articulate pickups on them they're just not as as clear as these pickups and that's one thing I like about the EVHs everything on this guitar was made for purpose to work only with this guitar and I think that is just a brilliant idea for guitar manufacturers I mean, this is crazy high gain. You can hear every single note. That is nuts to me because it's just—it's just so clear. I mean, nothing. You can hear everything. Even with all that gain and uh, riffing on that string, you can still hear the string under it. And I guarantee you I can go pull out numerous other guitars that you would never hear. That. You would 
never hear that. And I got a tremendous amount of delay on this channel too. So that's just even a bigger testament on how good the pickups are in this guitar. It's amazing to me. After all these years, this thing still sounds this freaking good. And I really don't play this guitar a whole lot anymore because the fact that it is 24 years old, not that anything's going to happen to it because, like I said, the thing's built like a freaking tank. Um, you know, it's just this is just the greatest guitar I've ever had. I know I've said this numerous times, and I don't want something to happen to it. So, and it's got, unfortunately, it's got a chip in it right here. Um, I got a gash in it right here. I got a big, where's it at? There's a big mark in it. You can't see it, but there's a mark in it right there. The back of it, the back of it's actually in fairly good shape, believe it. You know, I got some nicks and dings and scratches in it right here. There's another ding down here on the end right there. And I just don't want to damage this thing anymore, you know, because this is something that I'm going to leave my daughter. And, uh, you know, when she gets all my guitars and stuff, Lord, by the time I die, this thing's going to be, you know, 40 years old. And, um, and it's still just going to be... An amazing, amazing guitar. Let's check out this front pickup right here. absolutely amazing the thing I love about this guitar is not only does it have amazing action on it and granted you can get great action on any guitar um, but the better the quality of the guitar the, the better the action you can get off of it the better the neck and of course the fret job but also the sustain and it's if you play a cheap guitar it's really hard to get great action and great sustain out of a cheap guitar simply because the component tree is not there that you need and this guitar, I mean, 24 years later, and it's still just, just amazing on the sustain. Look at that. It's just nuts how this thing will hold notes. And it's just, I've, I've never had a better guitar. That's why this is my mostest favorite guitar in the world. It does every freaking thing fantastic. And even on the clean channel, when the, oh, let me check this out. Splitting up the pickups. Honestly, is how I played a lot of times when I'm doing a lot of lead stuff. I go in the middle so I can get a little bit of the, the warmth out of this, a little bit of the bite out of this. I love that sound. And it's um that's just an amazing tone, and especially Lord, if you uh, 335, Gibson 335, that middle tone, to die for. Absolutely to die for. Gibson could do everything in the world wrong, but that one tone that he has 335 is absolutely stellar. And that's just, I mean, to me, that's just one of the tones of all tones. That thing is just brilliant guitar. Um, and one cool thing about Eddie Van Halen is he did the pickup switch right. I know they made Gibsons back at, during the days of the dinosaurs, but their switches are freaking wrong. They're wrong, they're wrong, they're wrong. Because everybody says, oh, man, the EDH is wired backwards. Actually, no. 
EVH is wired correctly. Les Paul is wired backwards. Why do you say that? Well, I'm gonna tell you why I, why I say that. Because on a Les Paul, down is your back pickup. And guess what? That is in my way. Down is the front pickup on this. Up is the back pickup. Well, Trace, why does that make a difference? Well, I'm gonna tell you why that makes a difference. Because when I'm tapping out of passage and that thing is down on the back pickup, I've already hit it and put it into the center position. Eddie Van Halen said, well, hell, that is stupid. Let's put it up so when we're tapping, if we do hit it, it stays on the back pickup. What do you know? Brilliant. I don't understand why Gibson will not flip theirs around. Because on my Les Paul, the first thing I do when I get it is I flip it around to make it like how it should be in my in my opinion. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, bullshit. You know, oh, sorry about the language. Uh, Gibson's correct. Da, da, da. Think about it. It just makes sense to have your rear pickup on the up. So when you're tapping, you don't hit that switch. Because when you're doing this and you hit that, you're going to hit it every single time. So flip that thing around, make it correct, and... That's just my opinion, just how the hell it belongs. Let's check out some clean tones real quick and then we'll wrap this thing up. We are gonna jump up to, let's see. Okay, we are back on another EBH clean tone. I love this tone, absolutely love this tone. <laughs> pickup split. Here is the front pickup. Still brilliant. Absolutely fantastic sound. And what I like about the front pickup, a lot of guitars I play um, and, and own, um, oh especially, it's, you know, not to start calling out guitars, but the front pickups get very wooden sounding to me. Very, very wooden sounding and it just it's just not... And I'm just going to go ahead and name out the guitar. I had a Sur Custom. And the guitar in itself was absolutely amazing. But I had the Sur pickups in it. And let me tell you, the back pickup was phenomenal. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, the front pickup, uh, it was the worst. Absolute worst. And um, it was just so bad. And we, clean or dirty, they just, it didn't have that creamy roundness like this one does. This has just got a very creamy round tone. And it's... Um, Oh, my shirt was so bad. That was so bad. And uh, I actually sold that guitar. Got rid of it. Beautiful guitar, but it had to go. And um, it makes great guitars, but I'll never buy another sir. And uh, But it's uh, the, the front pickup on this, clean or distorted, is just absolutely a brilliant pickup. I mean, it's just so clean. Amazing, amazing. Here's the rear pickup. Obviously, it's going to be a bit brighter. Still sounds fantastic, even for a clean channel. It still sounds really good. And yes, I know I'm very partial to this guitar, but. It's just the greatest guitar in the world to me. I absolutely love this guitar, but that front pickup. Utterly amazing. God, it's just fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. So that is my mostest beloved guitar right here. Um, I'm gonna go over the high points real quick. Flame maple top, matched very, very well. They do a very good job on the stain. Basswood body, beautiful binding on it. Binding is dead spot on. Um, it has the, the uh, EVH trim on it with the Detuna. Fantastic, EVH made pickups. This particular model, now the new ones, use the compound radius from 12 to 16 on the um, 
fretboard. This is a straight 15 bird's eye maple neck, bird's eye maple fretboard, uh, locking up here, and just an amazing guitar, man. Just all the, all the way around, an absolutely amazing guitar, and just one of my favorites by far. And if you ever get a chance to grab one of these, I highly recommend you do. Um, it may not be your bag. You may play it and, and just not like the way it sits or feels. It kind of fits me well. I do have a thing, if you've watched my other videos, about guitars with flat backs, because guitars with the cutaways have a tendency to roll up on me. This is the guitar that ruined my playing position. <laughs> and that's why, this, that's why I always gravitate back to the EVHs because it's literally ruined my playing for everything else. And that's why I'm now playing the Ibanez S series because they don't have the cutaway in the back. I just can't play anything with a cutaway now. And uh, although an arm cutaway here, that, that would be nice, man, because that, that thing will get on you after a while. But if you have a chance, play one of these guitars. I'm talking about the new ones. Play one of the Peavies. Um, I guarantee you'll love it. These things are absolutely phenomenal, built like a tank, sound amazing, bulletproof, indestructible guitars 24 years i replaced nothing absolutely nothing so there you go my most favorite beloved guitar in the world my 1996 pre-patent pv evh wolfgang a masterpiece of a guitar if you have any comments put it down in the comments section if you have any questions put it down in the questions section i hope you liked the video on my most favorite guitar and i've got some other most favorite gear i will be doing at one point but until then, keep playing, play hard, and rock on.